I don't believe in shortcuts, but I do believe in being smart. And I've got 10 garden hacks to share with you today that are game changers. Hi there, I'm Carrie from the Little Pallet Farmhouse and we run a channel all about homesteading. Join us as we develop our first generation farm here on our 20 acre woodland in the middle of the Midwest. We post weekly homesteading videos and weekly build projects with Caleb and once monthly tune in for our homestead documentary interviews where I spend time learning from other homesteading friends all over the USA. Well, daytime temperatures are warming up and if you're like me, you're probably chomping at the bit for spring to arrive. I've just started my seeds indoors and with that in mind, I wanted to share with you a few of my favorite garden hacks that won't cost you, but will definitely help you get a better return on your investment. In my mind, there is one thing that's better than recycling and that's repurposing because it means I don't have to go to the recycling center as often and I also don't have to spend money on things that I would otherwise have to get at the store. Here I'm raiding our recycling bin. You can collect egg boxes and anything that has had food in it, um, yogurt pots, sour cream containers, ice cream tubs. This one had mushrooms in it. Um, anything that can be reused again. And I'm gonna show you some really cool ways to reuse these containers now. Pots of all sizes and shape make great planting trays. This one had mushrooms in, these two were sour cream, different sizes. We have yogurt pots, I think this one had a roast chicken in. Anything that meat comes in, I wash it out. Um, I think this one might have had strawberries in. I especially like these ones um, with the lids um, because they make excellent propagators for starting your seedlings so that you can keep them moist moist by trapping the humidity inside the casing. Here I have some tomatoes that were planted inside an ice, ice cream tub. Here I've got some parsley seedlings growing inside one of those chicken containers from the roast chicken and see how to germinate the seeds. I actually just left the lid on there, I put some air holes and they've sprouted quite nicely. Um, this tray has got um, pepper seedlings growing in it and that was actually came with cinnamon rolls in so milk jugs make excellent growing containers if you just cut around the top portion of the container to remove the spout then you're left with a gallon sized planting jug which actually has a handle on it. I used this to plant in a dwarf variety of tomato that required just a little bit more of a growing space and just be sure to put some drainage holes in the bottom of the container. Starting seeds in egg boxes gets mixed reviews. I find the best way to use them is to make sure that when you're going to transplant into a bed, make sure you saturate the cardboard so it falls apart easily. My next round of containers are these um, bigger jugs. Um, I've got a uh, washing up liquid, orange juice, um, a honey uh, jar, and even olive oil. Just make sure that they've all had a really good rinse out. Um, and what I'm gonna do with these ones is I'm gonna cut the bottom off and use them upside down with holes in them. For crops like tomatoes and squash that like to have a deep root watering system and then that's going to be a really good way of getting water to the roots and keeping a reservoir of water next to the plant so that on hot days when the raised beds tend to dry out especially on days when i'm struggling to get around everything in the garden another way to use plastic bottles is as a mini seedling greenhouse uh, when you have critters living <laughs> in the woods that are likely to come in eat on small seedlings or dig up seeds, a good way to protect them is to actually use a water bottle with the bottom cut off and you can use them to place over your seedlings um, to give them protection from mice or other rodents who are looking for a tasty treat in the garden. Just be sure to take the cap off so that the seedling can get air through the hole. You might have heard of using eggshells in the garden, but what about a whole egg? This is an absolutely fantastic way to fertilize the roots of your 
growing seedlings. You might have heard of the story of the pioneers when they first landed on US soil and they struggled in their first year to get crops growing. It was actually a Native American who came and helped them by showing them to plant, I think it was fish heads in the ground next to their seedlings to provide a source of fertilizer and nutrition for the growing plants. So what I do is I give the egg a good tap to make sure that the shell is cracked before I plant it in the ground with the seedling that I'm planting. Here I'm planting tomatoes and I'm actually going to plant them into the depth of the first leaves. Tomatoes on their stem have little hairs all the way down which will actually develop into roots. So a good way to give a tomato plant a really strong root system is when you're planting it from a transplant plant it quite deep so that those little hairs can actually develop into roots. When I planted these tomato seedlings last year, I actually conducted an experiment. So I put eggs in the holes of the tomatoes that I planted in the raised bed. So here you'll see me plant a couple of tomato plants in this raised bed. And this is a vining cherry tomato, which actually uh, grows up the cattle panel that you can see is uh, is there as an archway in the raised bed. So I planted eggs in with the tomato transplants in the raised beds, but I did not plant eggs in the holes with my in-ground tomatoes because I wanted to compare the development of both plants. And I can tell you hands down that the tomatoes that were planted with the egg in the hole were they grew faster, they were more prolific growers, they had healthier leaves, they were actually more disease resistant. And I believe that it's because they had a really good root system, they had a good established start, and they had a lot of nutrition to get themselves growing sooner than the other in-ground tomatoes, which probably had um, exposure to more competition and perhaps more bacteria in the soil um, and so I definitely use this hack time and time again. As I mentioned we used um, livestock fencing for trellises in and around the garden. They work really well, they're really sturdy and they're really cost effective. So uh, this was a 16 foot cattle panel. Um, this one was actually second hand. It was left on the property. However, you can buy a brand new one for I think about $30 uh, from uh, Tractor Supply. And um, we just used a couple of T-posts here to secure and buried it a little bit into the soil. And the plants can grow up the inside of the archway. Now I'm using this hack to germinate my carrot seeds, but it works with any other seeds. And that is to cover them with a board. That's because the seeds like moisture when they're germinating. They don't like to be dry. They'll find it very difficult to germinate when they're dry. So covering them with a board will actually help the soil stay moist underneath the board. And once you see them pushing through, they'll be a bit, a bit yellow, but that's the time to remove the board. They'll very quickly go green. And I have a, a much improved germination success rate with seeds that can be a little challenging to get started, like carrots. Something that I find saves so much time and energy is using a surface weed barrier. If you are generating your own compost like us, or perhaps getting compost from a local farm which has a lot of animal manure in, it'll contain a lot of weed seeds. So we use a surface weed barrier to stop the weeds from germinating, and it allows our transplants to get a head start and really get established ahead of the weeds. This might not look pretty, but it's not supposed to. So uh, one thing we do is we compost in open beds. So any of my kitchen scraps or um, chicken uh, litter or, or horse manure, I will throw into uh, basically a bunch of um, frames that I, I roughly put together um, out of pallets. The chickens will get in there, they will scratch around, they will poop in there, they will dig through to eat uh, seeds. And this really just over the year is exposed to the weather and it turns into a really dark, rich uh, soil. 
Um, after a year, I will actually take the frame apart um, and I will transfer the soil from these containers um, into my raised beds in the garden for growing. Despite our best efforts, we're not in control of the weather. So when my spinach bolted last year, instead of just abandoning it or ripping it up, um, what I actually did is I let it go to seed because my plan is to harvest as much seed as I can so that I can grow a crop of baby spinach this year, which means that I would need um, an increased amount of seed, which I would over sow the bed with. And so I can harvest the leaves when they are young and juicy and tender. So these two items shown here, which you probably have on hand in your first aid cabinet, can do wonders for your garden. Now just a note on Epsom salts. It comes in two forms. This one here is a USP certified, which means it is approved for human use. You can get an agricultural grade Epsom salt, which shouldn't be used if you're going to be using it for human use. However, you can use this one in the garden. What it does is it delivers magnesium sulfate to the plants, and this is good in a number of ways. So one of the things that can be used as an application for is to help seeds germinate better. If you are direct sowing into the soil, then magnesium is something that um, helps germination by strengthening the cell walls. Equally, sulfur is lost during the germination process. So Putting back these two nutrients in an application can really help the seeds get off to a better start. If you're going to use it directly in the garden, you can mix one tablespoon of Epsom salt um, into a gallon of water, or you can actually put a, um, a tablespoon of the powder into each hole before planting the seed. It's the same for roots that are transplanted, so whether that be that you are um, transplanting a seedling that you have grown in a starter tray or you're repotting a plant or you are transplanting a bush or flowers. Um, a really good way to help prevent root shock uh, which causes wilting and leaf discoloration is to mix one tablespoon of Epsom salt for every gallon of water and apply it to the roots of the newly repotted plants. Lastly, as your plants get established, um, another way to use Epsom salts is as a foliar spray. So again, dissolving the Epsom salts into a gallon of water and spraying directly onto the leaves is going to help um, deter pests in a natural way. You might think of hydrogen peroxide as a disinfectant, and in fact it is. It has a similar chemical structure to water, but it carries an extra oxygen, and it's also found naturally in raindrops. You can use it as a foliar spray. It's best to look up on the internet to get your dilutions correct, but because it has a antibacterial and an antifungal effect, it can be used with really significant results to treat against root rot, against mildew and mold, and other fungal and bacterial infestations that can plague your gardens when there is a lot of humidity, especially in growing zones like we have here in the Midwest, where there are hot temperatures and heavy rainfall. So I hope that there are some tips you can take away from today's hacks to help you with your seed starting or growing. And if you want any of the details for any of the gardening equipment or products that you see me use, you can check out our Amazon shop by following the link in the description box below. They're all listed in there. Next up, I'm going to be sharing my seed starting setup and the grow lights that I'm using. So stay tuned for that. And don't forget to check out Woodshop Wednesdays with Caleb. He is going to be building some new rustic style raised beds on a budget as we expand our garden. So thanks for watching guys and for all your support, make sure you're subscribed and until next time, happy homesteading. From the valley to the border from the river to the road